Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present an updated version of the Lynx spacecraft. In particular the service module has been improved. We have uh, sized it up a little bit and I also add a launch escape system and there are redone engine stats including for the engines on the Sagita rocket. I have previously done a visual update to the Sagita rocket and now I have done one for the Lynx spacecraft itself. The launch escape system is traditional, as you can see, and just a normal SRB tower kind of thing. Uh, I did put a little hatch cover here, and that matches a hatch that I added to the Lynx spacecraft now. It has its top hatch for docking, and so there's a pass-through version of the Lynx spacecraft. We can open that here, and I actually need to put seats in for the Kerbals. That's important, because uh, by default, because this doesn't have a traditional IVA, uh, we need to have these seats, otherwise the Kerbals aren't going to be able to go in there. Uh, so yeah, each seat carries one and they board it like it's a regular command chair. Basically just like putting command chairs in. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by the command chairs, it's uh, you're familiar with them for the rovers, it's these guys. Basically there's no difference between this, this and that except for the look. So yep, we have those inside. And uh, this hatch here is its own separate part because I didn't want to put two different animations on the same part. And that hatch allows them to go out the side if necessary. Also, for the purposes of boarding, that would be necessary since this is going to be covering that. But it does have this little hatch lid here. So an, a crew access arm would go to that location. Anyway, and all this logic here. Uh, but yeah, I thought about making a launch escape system with a uh, different engine and building it into the service module and that was the ED5 engine. But I've redone the stats of the ED5 engine uh, based on a model of the ED5. There's two versions of how the ED5 came. Uh, there's a little booster pack with two of them and then a standalone one. The standalone one was actually sized larger and it had more thrust. So I just decided to change this whole situation, make the standalone one the regular one, and create a separate fairing so that it can be turned into a booster. And instead of needing two of them, I only need one, so it's like that. Anyway, that's a gas generator and methane oxygen engine, now called the ED-10. And uh, it has these stats here, 117 uh, kilonewtons. So I thought that maybe that would be good as launch escape system on this service module. We have plenty of room here to locate, let's say, four of those and give this plenty of thrust weight ratio to get off. But yeah, we'd still need some sort of cover on the top, I guess, uh, to protect it. Not sure. Uh, we might just do with a cap here if I make that version. Anyway, redid the service module to make it look better. And the ED1 engine that used to be on the service module has been turned into the ED7. Uh, which is upscaled by about, I think it was 15%. Uh, and so we get extra thrust because I wanted the extra thrust. Uh, the ISP has actually gone down. Uh, I recalculated for 150 PSI and we got 358 for that. So yeah, anyway, that is like that. Uh, I wanted a full tank of gas here. That was for Leo, uh, low Earth orbit, having the low low fuel levels. Anyway, a new adapter here for the Sagita rocket. Uh, this is the same except I'm using different RCS blocks there. And the ED4 engines that used to go on the Sagita rocket, I've repeated, uh, repeated, uh, changed to the ED8 engine. Instead of being gas generator, they are now stage combustion because, well, it seems like people can make stage combustion really cheap these days, so. We might as well just go with stage combustion, it makes it simpler. The model hasn't changed because the ED4 engine that used to go on here uh, didn't have a gas generator exhaust anyway. And the reason for that was because if you had a gas generator exhaust, it would get in the way of the nozzle extension. Uh, so what it was was a closed gas generator engine. And what that means is that the gas generator exhaust gets dumped back into the nozzle right here basically. Uh, so, yeah, since it was a closed gas generator engine in the first place, it was, uh, I just didn't bother to change the model, and we just call it a stage combustion engine. It's been rescaled down to 65% uh, of its former size because the chamber pressure is now 2,600 
ESI. Sorry for all this information, this information dump, but anyway, somebody will understand it. Um, and I recalculated the stats on it. It's actually less than I originally said too. The original numbers were optimistic. The thrust is the same because I rescaled the engine so that the thrust would be the same. Uh, but we get uh, in the sea level mode, 322 sea level and 338 vacuum. That's less on the vacuum but better on the sea level. Not really what I want, but it was 343 vacuum before. Uh, but again, that was op optimistic, I think. And then with the nozzle extended, it's 371 vacuum, it used to be 373. So, yep, that is, well, I'll just leave it on mode 2 for now. You'll need that one in mode 2 anyway. Okay, and then we have my Sajita Super Heavy, which is the version with four boosters. And these engines have been rescaled as well, and have those stats, the sea level stats. Um, they look a little bit dinky down there, and we don't really need these fairing pieces here, because they're not as big, but we'll leave that be. Uh, so, yeah, yep, let's see if this operates as it should and can do a nice moon mission and come back. I don't know. Uh, the launch escape system, we're mainly concerned with it going off. Uh, we don't want it to hang around. Uh, it should be able to pull the capsule off uh, safely with plenty of room to spare. One difficulty with putting the ED-10 engines on the service module is they have to push a much larger mass. It'll include the surface module, whereas this system just pulls the capsule off. That depends. Uh, if we had a unified service module and capsule, I think that would be a better system because then we'll be getting everything back. Like Dragon has a unified uh, service module and capsule, though not much of a service module. It's uh, only a lower floor orbit system. But yeah. Anyway. It looks a little bit weird, but it always did. Let's see how it works. So we are here in an install with Principia, and so the nav ball is different. And that's a whole other complication, but we'll deal with that. The Sajia so Super Heavy always came really close to this structure here. Um, might need to rethink that. Anyway, uh, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio. Oh, I didn't put any kerbals in. Oh, I guess we'll do it automated. That's no fun though, maybe. Anyway, maybe safer. We'll just go with it. The engines do throttle, so even though it has a high thrust weight ratio, we can deal with that. Well, we might as well do the throttle down through max Q and everything. In fact, I don't particularly feel the need to throttle up necessarily. So the idea with the Sajita rocket is just mass production, uh, not reusability necessarily. Though with reusability we can go to the Shinkansen space plane, which this system is sort of paired with. One reason that we have mass production is that the tanks and the engines also go on a space plane. So. If we want to do reusability, we can just use the space plane. Okay, throttling all the way down. Okay, how's booster set gonna be? We've tested it before, though. That I tested in my video of the Sajita Neo. Okay, we can throttle up now. Oh, we've got too high a uh, time to apoapsis here. Okay, well, separation. And let me just get the RCS on. And launch escape system jettison might be better right now. And off it goes. I think that's enough thrust weight ratio. Okay, well, let me extend the nozzle. Oh. Came close to hitting the interstage there. All right. Well, it's unusual, but I think I'm gonna coast to Apoapsis. <laughs> we do have the Delta V here for a transfer. Now with Principia. Oh gosh, I didn't even line up with the Moon. Well, good thing we don't have any body on board. 
We need to check out whether the solar panels are working properly too. Okay, well, ignition. Boom might be a little bit big. Okay, we are in orbit and we have enough to transfer to the moon in theory. Okay, well, let, let's try a flight plan. Okay, well, plan moon periapsis. Uh, six days, huh? Okay, well, it says something there. This is a heck of a way of looking at it, though. Our service module has a lot of fuel. Okay, well, if it actually gives me that moon periapsis, that'll be fine. That wouldn't be fine for if we had crew, because six days is too long. It'll be fine enough for now. Okay. Get all that junk out of the way. And ignition. Took a little bit of time on the ignition though. So for those keeping track, uh, the Sajita Super Heavy is trying to get 22 tons over to the moon. And we'll just barely sort of make it. So, yep, that is its capacity. Considering it's about half the size of the Saturn V, it's, it's about right. I mean, it doesn't have the low efficiency, huge low efficiency Carolock stage, but it also doesn't have the high efficiency Hydrolock stages. It's middle ground with the methane and oxygen. Though, frankly, the J2 was not really, really high efficiency. Okay, let's cut there and take a look at what's happening here. It's RCS at the rest of the way. There's pretty powerful RCS on this stage. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any rear RCS. Let's get rid of the plan. Well, it seems like we're hitting the moon. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're starting to get sunlight here. Let me get rid of the service, not the service module, the upper stage. Okay. Um, that's not recharging the way it's supposed to. Okay, well, let's see. It's probably, I mean, it's supposed to. Let's see if there's one angle where it can. Uh, obviously, this is supposed to work like this. So we have found something that does not work right. Oh, here, here. Now it's recharging like this. I think the sun catcher thing is only working in one direction. There's a weird way of looking at it, but there we are. Oh, 201 kilometers is our periapsis. That's not too bad. So this service module is meant to have enough delta-v to push a lander around, obviously, to capture a lander into orbit. Okay, I think we are in moon SOI. I'll take the 200 kilometers. That was the smoothest moon transfer ever. At least in Principia. Okay, ignition. Uh, I guess the plume is alright, but it could do with some scaling up, maybe. Looks cute, though. Okay, we have captured. I mean, okay, well that's that's a complicated discussion when it comes to Principia, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it did the camera change indicating we captured and we're technically in the SOI, but... Oh, there, uh, well, sort of. <laughs> oh dear. I guess. So I tried to do James Webb Space Telescope uh, in Principia, however... Uh, when I tried to turn back to the James Webb Space Telescope afterwards, the game crashed. So, I'll just have to redo that from scratch. Yeah, so it is a full Apollo-like service module. Except, uh, not as long because it's broader. It's The capsule is 5 meters in diameter instead of 4. So, we don't have to have quite as long a 
service module, also the engine is more efficient. Though smaller, it has half the thrust of the service propulsion system engine. Oh, periapsis is going down a bit. Let's wait until our periapsis to circularize, and we will try to circularize. Stuff is changing here. I think I'll take that for now, 188 by 120. More interested in seeing how we get back. We have a lot of, a lot of fuel to work with, but not a lot of practice. Just a mess of information here. That's costing a lot more than I would think it ought to. But if we get back, we can get back. Okay, uh, we'll go with that for now. But yeah, that's more than I normally plan as a margin for a return. Eight hundred and seventy-five meters per second. Well, so I'll just let's quickly calculate our remaining delta V at the end. One thousand two hundred and seventy-six. So we'll just go go with that. The moon, just in case we were wondering what it was looking like. Well, that's Earth-centered. I should switch back temporarily. All right, slowing fuel down, and ignition. All right, we are headed back. Predicted Earth impact, right, we need to avoid that. Okay, we have a perigee. And, well... Let's try that. 58 kilometers. Alright, we need to get into daylight. And we are recharging. Uh, let's make sure we stay that way with the persistent rotation. So smart ASS off. Persistent rotation works with SAS on. It's so many other things. Okay, out we go. Yep, there's Earth. Everything seems to be in the dark. <laughs> My luck. Okay, going normal. Periapsis is 59 kilometers. I still haven't fixed the... the what you call it? Um, descent mode on the links, unfortunately. I'll have to remember to do do that. Okay, service module jettison and activation of the spacecraft RCS. Seems successful to me. Heat shield is still on. <laughs> Very important to us. Oh, the hatch is open. Shoot. Well, nobody was inside. Well, as it so happens, our periapsis is constantly going down somehow while I'm time warping. <laughs> We'll have to watch out for that. You see, I'm time warping, the periapsis is going lower, but it's going lower to what I wanted, which is 58 kilometers, so it's fine. Guess it's according to plan. Here we go. If we don't get much ablation, I should try it out without the custom drag cube and see if that helps. When I say helps, I'm basically nerfing a whole bunch of stuff if you haven't noticed. Um, we uh, practically all, I think, except for the ED10, uh, all of the new engine variants actually have less ISP than the originals. Uh, but at least with the ED8 and ED8V, they're lighter as well, so that helps. But yeah, just trying to make things ever more realistic, if you will. Okay, we hear the service module destruction. And this spot is seven tons on its own. We expect some overheating. That shows that things are basically proper. We don't want this overperforming, if you will. It's actually a reasonable amount of ablator. Maybe I already moved a, uh, removed the drag cube. It's possible. 
Yeah, it, it doesn't have the drag cube on. Okay. So, yes. No custom drag cube and the blader is ablating properly. Looks like we're coming straight down. We will need the descent mode though. That's too high on the g-forces. Alright, we are through. Now it's just the uh, arrow cap, which has been tested before. I didn't change the arrow cap at all. And the parachutes. So, yeah, unfortunately it's all in the dark, but... Did not have a particular plan on that. In fact, we launched at the wrong time to head for the moon anyway. It was so eager. Okay, arrow cap jettison. Oh, went off in a hurry this time, actually. Looks like ground down there. Yes, it is. That's rare. <laughs> Alright, we have full parachute deployment and safe speeds, and where are we? Um, 13 degrees north and 17 east. Um, Africa? Yeah, but I think it must be Africa. Somewhere. It's nighttime and even the Earth in the map view not aid in visibility. I'd have to look up the coordinates. The thing with Principia is, uh, as we see, uh, it's now really laggy here because of all the Let's just go zero on that for a sec. Yeah, now it's happy, but it takes a lot of management, let's face it. Okay, well, anyway, as this floats down to the surface successfully, and that's the arrow cap there. I think it landed. No, <laughs> it blew up. All right. So, as this wraps up, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.